Welcome to God and Relationships with Colin and Maureen. Today's teaching is a Be That Man Men's School of Ministry special. The topic is the man you need to attain to. I pray the Lord will bless you. I pray the Lord will edify you and encourage you as you have a listen to this. You need to pray where you are, and you need to make your prayers consistent. You can run as many programs as you like as far as I'm concerned. You can be good to anybody that you like, but if the heart doesn't change, it means nothing. So I pray and I break the atmosphere, and I declare that the Lord reigns in this place. Hallelujah. So when I'm praying around my area, I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you rule and reign in Tilburg. You you rule and reign in Halston. You rule and reign in, King, in Milton Kings. You rule and reign and you declare the power of God where you are. Because that's what makes the difference. I've seen it, I've proven it. Okay? All that stuff is fine, but without prayer and without heart change, it's meaningless. And we, every individual needs the Lord Jesus Christ. We were born to praise God. We were created as worshippers. We were created to lead and direct and inspire and encourage others. God gave us that. He gave us the authority to do it. <coughs> Time for us to rise up. So I, I'm a person, I listen to things, I'm quite open-minded. But when it comes to praying, we have seen great results. Every week we pray, we set an embargo in our block. Because we're born again, God will protect where we live. God will protect where we are. I declare the word of the Lord. And I'm saying, men, we have absolute authority in our tongues. We have absolute authority right here within us when we start declaring the word of the Lord. So yes, I'm concerned. And yes, I'm concerned about our young men. Men that are supposed to be looking up to us. Men who we are supposed to be mentoring pray for, encourage you. Sometimes I may not want to listen, but keep on praying. Amen. Keep on praying. Because I'm telling you, I am here because of a praying grandmother. Yes. I never knew my grandmother, but I knew she was praying for me. Yeah. I'm here because of a praying mother. And even though I didn't have a relationship with my mum, I know she prays for me. And look where I am today. Because of praying people. How much more power do you and I have in our tongue? Bless God. So keep on praying. Don't lose that passion. Don't lose that hunger to bring men where they ought to be. In the presence of Almighty God. So we're going to pray for our young men today. Because I'm a great believer. We've got a lot of young, great men. And I want to tell you this. Not every person that you see is bad. And not every young person that you see is bad. We only get to see all that in the media. But I want to tell you there are some great things going on in the lives of our young men and women out there. But we don't get to hear about that. So let's not keep focusing on the negative. Let's just pray against the spirit that is trying to disturb our minds. Amen. I want us to stand. We've got to just go to page five of our programs. I want to just pray our first prayer here before we go into 
teaching here to our young men of the nation. <coughs> and I want us to pray this with a heart of passion. Don't just pray it because it's words, but pray it because there's power in the words. Amen. Amen. It's page five of your programs. Because we're going to just pray together. This is for our young men. Because I'm, 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 I'm concerned. Because God is getting ready to raise up his men. Amen. Let's just pray this prayer together. One, two, three, go. Lord God, we lift up the young men of our nation to you. From the depths of our heart, we know that no matter what their race, creed, color, family origin, life experiences, or socio-economic background, they have need of you. We cry out for those who believe they have no hope, that you, Lord God, will help them to understand that there is a glorious hope that they can have in Jesus Christ. For those who feel unloved, we ask that you let them know that you love them enough to send your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for them, that they may find freedom and wholeness in and through Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For those who have no father or an absent father, we ask you, Lord God, we will let them know that you are father to the fatherless and that you will always be there for them. We pray also that you will send someone along their way to help and guide their life. For those who feel rejected and feel that no one cares, our heart's cry is that you will help them to know that if they come to you through Jesus Christ, you will accept them in the beloved. In line with what your word says in Ephesians 1 and verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. 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 Be seated, please, brothers. Now you get a picture of where my heart is. And the more we pray, the more we change the atmosphere. And do you know, but for the prayers of the saints, things would be a lot worse. Do you know that? But for the prayers of the saints, the set apart ones, things would be a lot worse. But we bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We got some more prayers in a little while. One prayer. Praise God. Come on, Jesus. You see, there is, there, is, there is power in the unity of prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And that's why sometimes we just need to pray prayers of agreement. Because oftentimes we we're praying so many different things, it causes confusion. But prayers of agreement mean something. That's why I do the prayers the way that I do. So that we can agree in prayer, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. I want to just drop some a thought into your spirit. And I want you to be attentive to the word of the Lord today because oftentimes we will come and we we do a lot of things, but we do need to be taught, and I love sitting under teaching myself, so I'm a great learner. I learn to be a disciple. I learn to be a good pupil and a good follower of Jesus Christ. And whatever positions we are holding right now in our churches, in our organizations, we are still men. That doesn't change. Whether you are a bishop, an archbishop, a pastor, a deacon, a teacher, doesn't matter what ministry you hold, you are still a man. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Your title is just something to identify you with. But you are still men. You have needs. You have hurts. You go through situations in life. You meet the challenges that every man meets. 
whether it's the lust of the eyes or the burden of the flesh, whatever it is, yes. we are still men. Yes. And people forget that. Yes. And God wants to take us to a level in Him that He looks at the real you. Because some of us are hiding behind a mask. You're the person that you want other people to think you are. Do you get that? Many of us do that many times. We just want people to like us anyway. We want people to love us anyway. Yeah? So you walk along and you're smiling and you're bubbly. But in here, you're wounded. You're battered. You're bruised. In here, you're at home. You've got things going on in your relationships. You could be beating your wife. But you could be abusing your children. And you know something? God is a healer. So whatever position we hold in ministry, we're still men. Amen. And God wants to make us genuine men. Because Jesus was the genuine article. This is the you can get the picture now. So some of us are operating outside of God's will, God's plan, and God's purpose. So we don't see changes because we're not doing things God's way. But I want us to be open today. Because in here, I've been hurt, I've been wounded, I've been down, I've been kicked, I've been thrown, I've been laughed at, I've been mocked, but it has never ever changed my relationship with God. Amen. Never. And it never will. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is the best thing that has ever happened to me. And second, having a beautiful wife and family. Those are the things that matter to me. So my beloved brothers, we may not be going according to the program, but we're going to go God's way. And we need to be praying for our men. All of our men, young and old. Struggling. When I was a young boy, and my mother left my father, and I want you to know that I have a good relationship with my mom now. So I'm just telling you a story. When I was a young boy, my mother left my father. It didn't affect me at the time. Because you don't know how to feel when you're 11 years old and because you don't really know what's going on. It affected me more when I got married. Mm. And sometimes challenges in life can affect you later in life. Amen. And you don't know where they're coming from. And some of our men are so confused and messed up because they don't know why they act the way that they do and why they behave the way that they do but, but, but what the Lord did for me is that he took me back so he sent me backwards and he told me that I had a fear of abandonment that's what the Lord told me I had a fear of abandonment you know why I had a fear of abandonment? because my mother left me and I didn't know that that's what was going on in my life but the moment I knew that's when things began to change. That's when I started to pray and ask the Lord to root out any other rubbish that's inside of me so that I'm not walking around in a curse, but I'm walking in a blessing. Amen. So I had to pray and change the way that I think and thought because I did grow up hating my mother. And some of you have got hatred for some people that have done some things in your life and I'm saying to you, let it go. And I'm saying to you, where you've had that thing, you need to repent and let it go. Yeah. Because that is not going to get you to heaven. You hold on to all that junk, you're going to remain exactly where you are. Yes. So I said, Lord, I thank you that I'm able to forgive my mom and to have a good relationship with her. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Because the Lord can do that. But I'm saying that many of our men are hurting. Many of them are going through issues. Some of them have got issues with their fathers. There are over a million and a half uh, children that don't get to see their fathers every year. Sometimes.
sometimes it's through the issues with the mother, sometimes it's just genuinely absent fathers, but for whatever the reason, it has an effect on a child, particularly on the boys, because they become confused and disoriented. So I want us to be mindful today that whatever your challenges are, God can take care of them. I want you to be mindful today that prayer really does change things. I want you to be mindful today that every man that you meet on the street, you pray for them. The moment you walk past anybody or you're walking towards somebody, you pray for them because you don't know what they're going through. But God does. There are people that I will go up to and say, Lord, the Lord bless you. Or the Lord loves you. Or the Lord cares about you. And that word means something to somebody. Have a good word to say. Don't have anything bad to say. And those of you that are married, I want to make this very clear. If you don't have anything to say good about your spouse to anybody, mm. don't say anything at all. That's right. Because there are some people out there, I'm telling you, they go out there and they talk about their, their, their wives like she doesn't exist. Yes. And I'm saying, I'm talking to men today, I'm not addressing women, I'm addressing men. Yes, Have respect for your family. And don't go outside and talk negative rubbish to other people mm -hmm. to give them a, a, a bad conception of your family. No, sir. Yes. I have never, from the time I've been married to my darling, I have never, yes. unless I have anything you know, you heard me talk about mine a lot, and I will never speak anything bad about her. Mm -hmm. You understand that? If anything's going on in my home, that's my business. But don't ever speak badly about your family to other people. Because what does that say about you? Think about that. Honor, 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 respect. God said to me that I must honor my mother and my father. And yet all that hatred and hurt was inside there. But God spoke to my heart about that. He said I honor them for who they are and not for what they do. And that's what makes the difference. Amen? The Lord is good. All the time. He's very, 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 very good. Thank you. We are living in a time where we are seeing increase in violence, in killings, burglaries, muggings on our streets. We hear a lot about rapes and drug abuse, and children killing children, also children lying to their parents. Disobedience appears to be a common theme amongst many families. Husbands and wives are at each other's throats daily, putting the blame on each other. Domestic violence has increased and divorce has become a way of life for many. Adultery is on the increase. And families are breaking up under the pressure of life. And the government once said, it is time to get back to basics. Yet yeah, scandal rocks the House of Commons. But in the times that we are now living in, I want to say this and I want to make it very, very clear. Jehovah is raising up men of prayer. He's raising up men of integrity. He's raising up spirit-filled men to bring about a traumatic turnaround in this time of worldwide crisis. And God spoke to my heart and he made me to make sure that I say to you, we need to be praying for our men in the nations. We need to be praying more now than any other time in history <coughs> because the devil seeks to sift them like wheat. But Jesus said to Peter, I have prayed for you. And I'm saying to every man out there, I have prayed for you, hallelujah. God is on the throne and he's on the case, amen? He's on the throne. Jehovah's desire is to build into us strength and heavenly wisdom that we may learn to govern, to teach, to pray and to set an example to our children by living according to him and his word. 
Hallelujah. You know what? I ain't afraid to live by his word. I've got past carry now. You understand? I, I look at the word and I say some prayers in there that more than I have prayed for individuals just using the word of God and it has made a dramatic difference in their lives. The word of God works. Don't ever forget it. Don't ever neglect it. And God is raising us up to walk according to his word. Amen. We must recognize who we are in the God in whom we serve. And we must put his word into operation to stem the challenges and crises that we and many others are facing in our world today. And when I read this, I say that I am that man. I am that man that prays for people. I am that man that is praying for my family, for my neighbours, for my street, for my country, for the nation. I am that man. And that is the man that you and I need to attain to. One who is doing what God says. Not because you think you ought to, but because you know it's the right thing to do. I am that man. I pray every day for every man because I have seen what God is doing in the spirit realm. Oh, bless God. The Bible tells us that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Whose power no foe can withstand whose power no foe can withstand whose power no foe can withstand now that's quite detailed isn't it I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God on him I lean and rely and on him confidently trust we can say this verse together come on I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God on him I lean and rely and in him I confidently trust that is powerful and every time I say that it makes me feel good it makes me feel powerful whose power no foe can withstand oh bless the name of the Lord Jesus said that he who sent me is ever with me my father has not left me alone for I always do what pleases him and as he said those things many believed in him trusted relied on and adhered to him so like Jesus I say he who sent me is ever with me didn't Jesus say lo I am with you mm. yeah all to the ends of the age come on always yeah. so let us not be afraid to stand on the authority of the word of God let us not be afraid to speak the word of God with power and authority let us not be afraid to declare the power of God in the land that we are now living in and let us stand up and be men Amen. Amen. And not just any men, but extraordinary men. Right. Men of power, men of authority, men of wisdom, men of understanding, men of knowledge, men of truth. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. Are we perfect? Not yet. So Jesus said to those Jews who believe in him, if you abide in my word, hold fast to my teaching, and live in accordance with them, you truly are my what? Disciples. And what is a disciple? A disciple is a pupil, a learner, a follower. Hallelujah. He adheres to a certain type of doctrine. And if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, you need to abide in him. So if you abide in him, then you truly are his disciple. Yes, yes. His disciple. Bless the name of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. That's what the word says. And you will know the truth. truth. And the truth. Come on, and you will know the truth. And the truth is Jesus. And He will set you free. He will set you free. Glory be to God. 
The word make, when used in the King James, when it says he shall make you free, is to set at liberty. Set at liberty. Oh. Deliver from the dominion and authority of sin. But the Alfred came just on time with a word in season. This is telling us that God wants us to be so close to him. Not to be afraid to use the word in every situation. And I'm telling you, you will get backlash. I'm telling you, there will be people that will not agree that you're using the word of God. But you stand on it. You believe it, you stand on it. You believe it, it will work. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. Now the Bible tells us in this particular verse, in this particular chapter, that in the midst, and I want you to listen to this very carefully, in the midst of a sinful, corrupt and wicked nation, where there was idol worship, shedding of innocent blood, deceitfulness, despising of holy things, profanity, sexual perversion, greed, extortion, uncleanness, false prophets and dishonesty. God sought for a man. Who did he sought for? Man. man. He sought for a man. I'm coming to that in a moment. Even the things that I've just mentioned is what's going on today, isn't it? So God is seeking for man. He says, I sought for a man. Yeah. The word is ish, and I'm going to come to that in a moment. Among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy him. But I found... He found no man. I looked. He was seeking for a man that was seeking after him, and he found none. Because they're busy talking. Some of them are busy involved in what we've just read about. So he found... None. He found none. The word sought when used here is the Hebrew word bakash which means to seek, to require, to desire and to secure. That's the word sought. The word man which is the Hebrew word ish is a man, person or individual. It further expresses man of God, man of understanding, man of discernment, male, husband, one who is betrothed to be married. That man, the spirit man, ish, is what we need to attain to. Whenever the Bible uses the word men or man, you will find it is used either plural or singular. You will find that it either refers to mankind, mm -hmm. which refers to both male and female, yes. or it refers to the man. But this man, Ish, is a man who seeks after God. This man is a man of discernment. This man is extraordinary. This man is filled with power and authority. This man knows who he is in God. This man wants to do what God desires him to do. This man is who we need to attain to. Ish. It also denotes a man in contrast with a woman and further denotes a great man in contrast with ordinary men and it denotes champion. That man is what I need to attain to. That's what I strive for. So that I can be that man that God says I am. Amen. The same word is used in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Ish! That man is what we need to be attaining to. Jesus. That's where we need to strive. That's where we should be driving our energies. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, God is on the throne. So I'm going to 
going to take you through it a bit more now. So we get a bit more understanding, then we're going to pause for a bit. The Hebrew word for man is ish, and the Lord wants us to understand this. That's why I do it many times when I have men's meetings, because I want you to get this into your spirit. The Hebrew word for man is ish, which is spelled Aleph Yod Shin. And the Hebrew word for woman is Isha, which is spelled Aleph Shin He. Notice that they were both created with Aleph and Shin. The Aleph signifies God's strength and all that he is. Shin signifies fire, which represents the spirit, the tree of life, the burning bush, and the presence of God. The Hebrew spelling of God is Yehovah, which is the Hebrew word that translates as Lord in capitals, and it is used approximately 7,000 times in the Bible, more often in the Old Testament. Why do you need to know this? Because you need to know who you are. Amen. You need to know whether you're operating as a genuine man. That's why we need to know this stuff. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. If we don't know this, then we don't know who we are. But this man is who I need to attain to. Now I want you to look at here now. Jehovah, okay? It is used 7,000 times in the Old Testament. Jehovah declares God's absolute being. The source of everything. He is the beginning and he is the end. We know this. The title that we saw, Jehovah, YHVH, or some people put Yahweh, okay? Principles the same. It's the same God, okay? It is known as the Tetragrammaton, which means the four letters. Jehovah. Here is what Jehovah does. And this is what we need to pay close attention to because I'm telling you, God is taking us on a powerful journey. When I understood this, I knew what I needed to attain to. Praise God. Paul, the Apostle Paul says, I haven't quite attained there yet, but I press towards the prize yes. of the high calling of God. Yes. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Here's what the Jehovah does. He places the masculine first letter of his divine name, which is Yod, which is the Y, which means hand. He puts it between the Aleph Shin to make the Hebrew word for man, which is Ish. Aleph Yod Shin. This tells me that God is central to my existence. What does it tell you? Isn't God central to your existence? Your very identity is in Him. So when you attain to that, that man, you will be extraordinary. Praise the name of the Lord. He places the feminine second letter of His name, which is the H, which is He, which means window. And he places it after a left shin to make the Hebrew word for woman, which is Isha. A left shin he. Bless the name of the Lord. Now, remember that hand signifies worship, strength, guidance, work. God has given us the ability to worship to walk in his strength, to walk in his guidance, and to work according to his plan. Yeah. That man is what I need to attain to. Oh Jesus. Window signifies revelation, breath, and lookout. All of which show God's care for us, love for us, and faithfulness to us. Where do we see the word window? In the, in the identity of the woman. Come on, follow me here. Okay, he places the second letter of his divine name here, which means window. That's the woman. Revelation, breath, and lookout. Praise the name of the Lord. Isn't the woman supposed to be your help me? Yeah. Isn't, doesn't your woman sometimes have knowledge that you don't have? There are times when we are going along and they'll say, have you thought about this or do you remember this or something? You understand what I'm saying? They have revelation to give us. They can breathe good things into us. They are our lookout. That's why they are help me. So don't disrespect them. Praise God. But you work together. So we need to attain to what God says we are. Hallelujah. You work within your role and I will work within my role. But, Jehovah is central to our existence. 
not just my existence, but to our existence. And we must not ignore God's presence in our lives or over time we will burn and self-destruct. That's a dangerous place to be at, isn't it? Yeah? Okay, now. Each, and I want you to pay attention, men and women are equally able to have a direct, personal and functional relationship with God. Both the man and the woman can have a direct, functional relationship with God. Isn't she our lookout? Isn't God a revelator? Yes. So he reveals things through her for me. Yes. Oh bless God. Hallelujah. However, within all of this, as we've spoken about, God has an order in which we must flow. Yes. But when you know who you are, you will walk in your role. So the woman won't be the man and the man won't be the woman. They will be what God says they are. Yes. Bless the name of the Lord. Each must work, as we've spoken, within the parameters of his or her God-given directives to have good success in life and to bring about unity in the home, in the church, in the community and in the nations. Never, ever, whether you are married or not, never ever treat a woman as a second class citizen. Right. Amen. Amen. No, no you, you didn't hear what I said. Don't treat women as second class citizens. Yeah. They are revelators. Yeah. Hallelujah. They are our lookout. Praise God. Why would you disrespect them? They can hear from God just like we can. Yeah. Sometimes more. Sometimes more. Amen. The Holy Spirit can move mightily in their lives just like he can move in us. Glory to God. Come on. Whether it's more or less, it doesn't matter. The thing is, it's the same power. So let's not disrespect those who we have in our, around us. Yeah. Don't disrespect them. And you teach your sons to respect women. Yes. Teach them. Yes. Just like you teach your daughters to watch out for them nasty men sometimes. Because yes. there are a lot of good men out there. Bless the Lord. Look at what Adam says. Genesis 1.23 Bless God. At last, Adam says this, at last, a suitable companion, a perfect partner, bone from my bone. This is when God has meticulously created and brought this wonderful woman to him. Flesh from my flesh. I will call this one woman. Isha as an eternal reminder that she was taken out of Ish. So why do we disrespect one another? Because there are some women that disrespect their, their spouses as well. Yet we are created by the same power, by the same anointing, by the same blessing. And you see emphasis added there. Look at what it says in Joshua 14, 6. Then the children of Judah, to Judah came unto Joshua in Gidah. And Caleb, the son of Jephunu, the Canaanite, said unto him, Thou knowest the living thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of? Which is? Ish. Concerning me and thee in Kadesh Bernia. Whenever you see man of God, that refers to Ish. That is the man that we need to attain to. That man listens to God. That man responds to God. That man desires to do God's will. That man does things God's way. That man doesn't mess around, hallelujah, when it comes to the things of God. You know the right thing to do, you just do it. Amen. Because sometimes people come to you with questions that they already know the answer to. It's because they've already made up their mind they want to do something else. But this man, there's no procrastination. There's no issue. I'm going to do what God tells me. Hallelujah. Because he's a spirit. I'm made in his image, therefore I'm a spirit. And that's what connects me to him. My identity is in him. His name is central to my existence. That's all I need to know. That man is what I need to attain to. Oh, bless God. Proverbs 10, 23. It is a sport to a fool to do mischief. 
but a man of understanding, which is Ish, has wisdom. That man is what I want to take to. Hallelujah. I can see things in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. Come on. You want answers to questions? I see it in the spirit realm. I've seen things change dramatically just by the power of the word. Because if you discern the word, you speak it into a situation, it changes the situation. And if more of us got together in unity and pray against the tide of time that we are now living in, I'm telling you the world will be turned upside down. God is seeking for a man. Ish. One who will do what he says. Hallelujah. And then first Samuel 13, 14. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. This is Samuel talking to Saul. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. Ish. That man. That's desire only for things for God. That man only seeks the face of God. That man only does what God says. That man's desire is to please God in every way. He sought after somebody who was after his own heart. Ish. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Yes. So if you don't do what God says, somebody else will. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. And if it takes the women, then that's what's going to happen. But God is seeking for men. He is seeking for ish. He is seeking for that man who is extraordinary, who recognizes who he is in the garden, who he serves. That's who God is seeking for. He's seeking for a man who is hungry enough for him to say, you know what? I want to see a change in my area. I want to see a change in my community. I want to see a change in the lives and hearts of men. That man is what I attain to. Bless God. Therefore, a real man represents fully all that God is. His priority is to do things God's way. His priority is to fully submit himself to the leadership of God. Hallelujah. To the leadership of God. To the leadership of God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. We're going to calm down now in a few moments and we're going to break. We're going to pray before we do that. The word hedge, when used in Ezekiel 22, refers to the word gadar, which means fence or wall. So he was looking for a man to build up the hedge. Do you know how powerful you are when you know who you are in God? There is nothing that can get through you. Hallelujah. The moment you pray and plead the blood around your place, there is nothing that the foe can do. Because he cannot withstand, as we looked at the scripture earlier, whose power no foe can withstand. Hallelujah. The word stand, which is the Hebrew word amad, means remain, endure, to take one stand, to present oneself, to continue, to persist. Be steadfast, stand firm, and withstand. Sometimes you need to persist. And sometimes you need to be steadfast. And sometimes you just need to stand. That man is what I attain to. That man is where I'm going. That man is the journey that I want to get to. Hallelujah. The word gap, which in the Hebrew word is correct, means breach. That which is broken, a broken wall, bursting forth. To stand in the gap means that we need to plug in somewhere so that the enemy cannot get in. There cannot be any breaches. When a man knows who he is, there will be no breaches. When a man knows who he is in God, there will be no breach. Because there is nowhere for the enemy to get through to you. He works on your vulnerabilities. He works on your weakness. He works on areas of your life that he knows you're struggling with. But when you plug those areas 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is no room in the inn. Amen. Glory be to God. So God's desire, and it's still his desire, is to seek out and secure a man who would stand out and be prepared to move from a position of being ordinary into the arena of extraordinary and be a wall of defense and protection. I am an extraordinary individual when I understand that as a man, my identity is in God. I attain to be ish, the man that God desires me to be. Amen? Amen. This man will persist in being steadfast and firm by presenting himself in intercession to stand in the breach on behalf of the land. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? On behalf of the Man. That man is who God is looking for. That man is who God is crying out for. That man is who God is seeking for. Who is standing firm, persistently, and praying for the nation. Praying for the communities. Yes. Witnessing to the youngsters. Declaring his words wherever he goes. Amen. Glory be to God. And I shout out today that I am that man. I am that man. I am that man that is striving, that is striving for excellence, to be what God wants me to be, to be the man that he has called me to be. I am that man. I am that man. Glory be to God. Why? Because it's not by might. It's not by power, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. And for the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm going to pause here because we're going to have a short break in a moment. When you see the word warfare used in this particular passage of scripture, the word warfare means apostolic career. Apostolic career. Mm. And what the Apostle Paul is saying here is this. In my career, as an apostle of Jesus Christ, a special messenger of Jesus Christ, I know that I don't fight with physical weapons of flesh and blood, yes. but I fight with the mighty weapons of God. Yes. Amen. That man is what I need to attain to, that I use the weapons of God that I use the weapons that God gives me. Hallelujah. That man is what I attain to more than any other man. That man. Because I recognize myself as an apostle or as a servant of Jesus Christ. So in my career as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I use the weapons that God gives to me. Amen. Amen. Every one of us can use that weapon of prayer to tear down strongholds. Amen. Yes. All right. Let's stand. We're going to do the next prayer on our sheet. And then we're going to go to pray. Page six. We're going to pray that prayer together. Bless the name of the Lord. Now you understand why we have these conferences. Because we don't just think about ourselves, but we think about others. And others will be coming. And there will be a turnaround in the lives of every man. Can I make that clear to you again? There will be a turnaround in every life of a man. Amen. There will be a turnaround. And if I have to stand alone, I will. But there will be a turnaround. No, you know what I mean. I'm saying God is doing something in the times that we are now living in. Are you prepared to be that man? 
Are you prepared to be the man that God desires you to be? The, the man that we have just spoken about, the one that we need to attain to. That's the man that we need to attain to. Amen? Amen. Let's do the prayer on page six. One, two, three, go. Lord God, for those who are bound by addictions and dangerous and destructive habits, bring them to a place that they will come to know that there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain in their lives and set them free. For those young men who are angry, full of rage and bitter, Please help them to know and understand that deep down they are really hurting and broken hearted and that Jesus Christ came to heal the broken hearted therefore they can be healed. Hallelujah! The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Lord God, for those who have suffered wrong and whose hearts are seeking revenge, we cry out that you will let them know that vengeance belongs to you and not them. For you are the righteous judge. Romans 12 verse 19 Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Lord God, we ask that you will stem the tide of bloodshed in our nation and communities. For even as Abel's blood cried out from the ground, the blood of our young men is crying out from the ground. Hallelujah. Our God is in the business of changing and transforming. And I'm telling you, when you start praying for your land, you are going to see a turnaround such as you have never seen before. Isn't that right? You're going to see it. And it's going to be great. And it's good that we are alive in this time that we can see. So let's be a part of it. And let's attain to this man. The man after God's own heart. This man who knows who he is in God. Ish. Hallelujah. The one who is central. Hallelujah. God is central to our existence. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. We're going to have a short break now. When we come back, we're going to be hearing from my good friend and brother-in-law, Dr. Trevor Adams, who's going to be sharing with us. Um, we've spoken nothing. I've just asked him to pray and seek the Lord, because I know the Lord has a word for us today. Amen? Amen. And we're going to have a short break. So, Father, we thank you that we're just going to have a uh, break now, Lord. We pray that you'll just bless. Father God, that we're about to partake in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. What an incredible and powerful teaching. If you have any questions or prayer requests, please email us at prayer at btmlifelight.com. All prayers and questions will be treated in the strictest confidence. Remember, email your questions or prayer requests to prayer at btm lifelight.com God bless you God keep you God cause his face to shine upon you and keep you in perfect peace until next time stay blessed